Hi everyone, um, give me a sign if you can hear me well. Um, and you can see my screen clearly. So welcome to this EMEA time um, webinar and we'll focus today on AWS EKS. Um, as you might have seen previous weeks with been talking about AKS on Azure. We have been talking about bare metal. Fyodor will follow. And today's topic is more or less um, <clears throat> design and deployment on EKS. And since last time we did this webinar in the US, there are a few new things. I'm happy to share them with you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. My colleague, Jane, who's with me on the call for sure, will take them up. So let's get started. So myself, I'm Philip Bogart. My colleague is Jane Cox. She's based in the US, myself based in Belgium. Um, since I'm getting old, I do have some experience, mostly in networking, load balancing, and security. Um, but that's mostly because I'm getting old. And for fun, I also organize a security hacking conference in Belgium. Um, my areas of interest are, of course, containers and Kubernetes, and for sure, the security aspect of these environments. So if I get off track and start talking about hacking, that's the reason. So Calico. Um, as you will know, Calico, Project Calico, uh, is probably a name you're aware of. It's all backed up by a company called Tagia, which is the enterprise behind Calico and Calico Enterprise, of course. Um, and that's mostly what we're going to talk about today. We're going to see how Calico can integrate within uh, EKS uh, mostly and hopefully terminate by a demo if the demo gods are with us. So what is Project Calico? Uh, project Calico is actually a community project um, backed up by Tagir and the community, of course. And its main focus is on networking. So we typically know a container networking interface is CNI. Um, but Calico can also be used on virtual machines and other types of holes, meaning that we're not only spanning containers and Kubernetes, but also visual machines or bare metal nodes. Um, that's one part, networking, but also Calico is even more broadly used when it comes to network security, because it's one of the first and most advanced implementations of network security policies, or maybe some of you have heard about label-based network security policies in the past. So check out our Slack channels, Slack, uh, check out our websites, um, cool open source tools and interested in uh, the enterprise version of it, feel free to check out thegeo.io. So what is Project Calico? As I said, it's a simple uh, and easy to use networking solution for Kubernetes. And other types of environments, but today we'll focus on Kubernetes, of course. It's a secure uh, setup and for more scalable. Um, throughput, uh, when we talk about Calico, is pretty high. There are some non-Calico uh, analysis. Uh, if you search Google, you will see that we come up pretty well. Um, Calico is also a network solution that supports quite a range of uh, ways to implement the CNI, whether you want encapsulation or not, whether you want the VXLAN or, or not. And we try to do as much as we can to basically not compromise uh, the performance. Because of the use of BGP, as well as a very intelligent way of managing IP addresses inside of clusters, it's getting uh, a massively scalable solution. I will talk about that shortly um, later. Um, Calico, the network security policy engine, is a pretty wide industry standard for networking uh, policies in 
uh, managed Kubernetes uh, environments, uh, whether it's AWS, Google, Azure, IBM, you can use it uh, pretty much everywhere. Of course, we also integrate with quite some other uh, solutions that embed Calico from Docker to Rancher to Red Hat and the list goes. Um, for what we know of, there are quite more than 150 thousand clusters that are running Calico. And that's only what we know of. So it's probably way higher. When we talk about Calico, we typically talk about Calico or Project Calico, which is the open source version. But of course, there's also Calico Enterprise, which is a supported uh, solution based on Calico, together with some advanced and additional tools. Uh, to basically um, facilitate troubleshooting, um, visibility, logging, and so on and so forth. Um, if you check out other or future events, we'll short talk about that uh, more. Um, so we also integrate with Istio. Um, so when your choice is to use for Calico, we actually, or you're actually sure that it's future proof. Um, Calico Enterprise itself is used by the biggest companies around the world, um, including companies like AWS, Google, and so on and so forth. So if you're interested, check it out, please. So today we're going to talk about EKS. So we're talking about Amazon and Kubernetes or a managed Kubernetes service uh, around um, AWS. So as I already mentioned, um, Calico Enterprise or the Calico open source solution uh, for that matter uh, can actually be installed on quite a broad range of environments and platforms. Um, why is this important? Because first we're proud of it and two because it means that even if you're thinking about having uh, Kubernetes on-premise or on the cloud or hybrid which is uh, perfectly possible. Um, when you opt for Calico, you're sure you can use it across all your environments and clouds um, that you can reuse and use your network security policies because it is still a very important uh, thing, network security policies. Um, and there is a small box in the middle, which is federated security, which basically means that through using Calico Enterprise, you can actually manage your security policies as one or at one single pane of glass across all your clouds. Basically meaning that if you want or you have to move or combine an application in between two clouds or two different environments, while through our management plane, you can push exactly the same policies, whether it's EKS or uh, another type of solution. So it's pretty important uh, that we stress out the importance of enterprise and the added value of it. Calico is part of AWS or Amazon EKS. So the network policy engine, so the security part is already integrated within EKS. So whether you're using the network CNI or not, you're using Calico network security policies. Uh, the network policy security engine of Calico, as you know, uh, can support native Kubernetes security policies as well as Calico network policies, which are more advanced and flexible, of course, but both are supported. So if you're using EKS and you're using network security policies, you're using, um, of course, um, Calico. Something relatively new is that besides using the network security policy engine, you can also use Calico, the network plugin. So as you know, the CNI. There are a few different CNIs uh, that you can use. By default, you will actually use the Amazon VPC CNI plugin, which is a simple and secure option of AWS. If you want a more advanced, more flexible, more scalable, CNI, well, uh, it's for sure worth um, checking out the first one in this list. Uh, and 
that's what we all also will show towards the end. I have two clusters set up, one on based on the Amazon VPC CNI and one on Calico. So we can show a few uh, differences. So this is something you can find on our website. So if you go to docs.projectcalico.org, you can find all this information. Um, so a small comparison um, to explain the demo later on is when we look at both CNIs, um, the major difference is actually how the address management is done. Uh, when you look at AWS uh, native uh, CNI, basically we'll see that IPAM is handled by the IP addresses or chosen out of the IP addresses assigned to the subnet of the node. That means that if you spin up a VPC, you create a subnet and you spin up some EKS nodes well, they get assigned an IP address out of that subnet. That means that IP address management is tightly related to the size of the subnets you assign to your VPC. Um, a cool thing when we talk about the VPC of AWS is there is no encapsulation. That has its pros and cons, and we can know that because we have exactly uh, the same uh, solution. Um, but if you compare it to Calico, yeah, you can actually use non-encapsulated mode, meaning that your pods will have IP addresses, which are having IP addresses um, that are routable and non-encapsulated, or you can opt for encapsulated uh, solution and there we support VXLAN and IP. Address management is handled by Calico, it's more flexible, if you're familiar with Calico, you know we have the IP poles, the blocks, and so on and so forth. So it's way more uh, easy to actually manage um, your IP address assignments. Both solutions do use a Calico policy engine, so there's almost no uh, difference. Both solutions, okay, don't know why this happened, but come on. Uh, sorry for this. Uh, both solutions do have security group integration. Um, there's a small mistake on this slide. Uh, we already released that. Um, that's one of the new things we actually uh, have to tell since July. So there is security group integration within both environments, which essentially means that you can create a network security policy that is actually targeting um, objects which are addressed by security group in AWS and which makes uh, life way easier if you want to actually create security policies in between pods and resources that live somewhere in the VPC. Data plane uh, in AWS is basically on IP tables, which is for probably 90% of the world like this. But as you know, uh, Calico supports IP tables. Uh, we also released eBPF data plane uh, shortly. So I hope to do a webinar soon uh, to check out eBPF. And there's also support for HNS, which is host networking service by Microsoft Windows. And I checked it out yesterday late. Uh, today, it's perfectly possible to add EKS Linux nodes, probably know that, but you can also add Windows nodes uh, to your EKS cluster. And something you might have picked up in the last week is that Calico open sourced the Windows CNI. So when I put all these things together, this means that you can extend your EKS cluster with Linux and Windows nodes, and the entire setup can be using Calico uh, together with VXLAN or non-encapsulated or IP in IP encapsulation. So great news, uh, open sourced Windows 
and the ability to use CNI in e the CNI, Calico CNI inside of EKS with Windows and Linux nodes. So there are quite a lot of blocks out on LinkedIn and so on and so forth. So feel free to check this out. So a few words about the CNI. Um, as I mentioned, the CNI or the native CNI in AWS, um, the part particularity is that the pods that are actually started on the side of your EKS nodes basically have an IP address that resides inside the subnet, which makes it pretty easy to connect to the pods and from the pods to connect to services or objects inside of AWS without uh, address translation. It's simple, secure, um, but it requires some attention when you actually want to scale it. So essentially what happens is you have two nodes uh, or instances in AWS, so working nodes. Um, if you boot up a pod, um, it actually starts and then basically the CNI is actually requesting in the VPC subnet an IP address um, these IP addresses are associated uh, to the EC2 instances. And actually, if you look carefully, you will see that the IP addresses of the pods are actually secondary IP addresses on the Ethernet network interface of your nodes. So if you look on the nodes, you will see that there are quite a lot of IP addresses which are actually sitting next to the primary IP address um, that are actually mapped in their turn to the pods. So it's pros and cons about this. Um, it's simple, they are reachable without any tricks. Um, of course, you have to know that there are limited numbers of IP addresses inside a subnet, which could uh, create uh, scalability issues. And another thing to take into account is that typically the subnets are slash 24. Um, so that would mean that theoretically you could have 250 and some IP addresses, but that's not like this that it works. So very often your nodes are limited. It's a setting that you can actually convey when you install the cluster that only 100 or even less pods can be run on one instance. So think about it um, because it actually is something to take into account when you design your uh, solution. Okay, so this is in short how VPCs or the native AWS CNI in a VPC works. Okay. On the other hand, there is an option to use the Calico CNI um, with advanced network security policies. Um, it's broadly known. As, and you have the ability to have commercial support through Tagira if you want to use the CNI of Calico. So in short, this is how it looks. So if in the case of a Amazon VPC CNI setup, pod A wants to communicate with pod C, uh, if you look carefully, you can actually see that the IP addresses of the pods are actually secondary IP addresses of the interface. And that means that when you look, let's say at the AWS networking layer, you will actually see the IP addresses of the pods and they will use the same routing mechanism. So um, pretty interesting. Um, if you need to communicate in between different um, availability zones, well, your packets need to be routed. So routing inside of uh, you, your VPC needs to be okay. Um, but I didn't find much trouble to get this working. So perfectly possible to deploy your EKS cluster across multiple availability zones without much trouble. By the way, if you use, for example, 
EKS-CTL to deploy your cluster, it's all taken care of uh, automatically. Okay, it's not my demo day today. Um, something to uh, add, um, when you're using network policies uh, inside of uh, EKS, we can actually, as I already mentioned, do security group integration, which basically means that you can create a network security policy inside of um, Tagira Enterprise, stress Tagira Enterprise, and through the mechanism of labels as you might be used to, you might actually control access based on objects which are matched inside of a security group. So, for example, if you want to allow pods to access, for example, a relational database, you can actually do that through network policies. Or if you don't want to use network policies, um, you can actually, actually use um, annotations on the pods. So you can annotate a pod with access DB, which is actually referring to a security group um, inside of AWS. So it's perfectly possible to do this um, while you're using Calico. So even if this feature is in use uh, with a native uh, VPC CNI, well, you can perfectly migrate and enjoy all the good stuff that Calico adds on top of it. So in the next phase, of course, we're going to see how we can actually replace the CNI by a Calico CNI. Um, as I said, there are quite some advantages when it comes to management. Um, we have the tool of Calico CTL, so you can manage your PGP, you can manage your IP pools, you can manage um, your, um, your blocks and so on and so forth. You have a choice in networking options when it comes to encapsulation. And something not mentioned here, but we support something which is cross subnet encapsulation. That means that as long as your pods communicate inside of the same subnet availability zone, we can do it without encapsulation. Once we have to cross the boundaries of a subnet, we will encapsulate automatically. Knowing this makes it way more easier to design and scale your networking infrastructure. Because please note that in the case of uh, the Calico CNI, we're not using the IP addresses of the VPC. We're using networking address spaces managed by Calico. Calico, of course, offers way more policy enforcement besides the native Kubernetes uh, security policies. We do support global uh, security uh, policies. Uh, we can call ingress at layer three and layer seven. So there is a possibility to, for example, do DNS query uh, checking and blocking. So if you want to control access to for example, an API. I um, don't know if you saw the last demo we did, but we actually sent a file towards Slack. Well, you can do that by controlling which domain names are allowed to be accessed. One of the nasty details is that Calico also support IPVS or IP tables. So if you think that IP tables uh, has a security bottleneck and you really need the speed and feed where you can switch to IPVS. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, we do support IP tables. We support eBPF, which is the new data plane, uh, as well as Windows uh, networking to have mixed clusters. So if you look at how Calico Sinai would look uh, in this beautiful design slides from our CTO, I will actually see that we're using 
uh, different type of interfaces. So if you would look inside of the nodes, you will see that there are Calico interfaces. Calico interfaces are connected to the virtual reality inside of the kernel and everything is based on routing. So this is exactly the same CNI as you would use, for example, on uh, bare metal. Um, through the use of Calico, you can actually also see that you can assign IP addresses out of an IP pool, which is not the same as the VPC subnet. So that means that as long as the routing in between the nodes within the same uh, subnet is okay, uh, we can actually communicate without encapsulation if we would love to do this. Um, how does Calico know that one node and the other node, which blocks are actually assigned to these? Nodes well inside of Calico when you install Calico by default there is BGP uh, routing uh, configured between the nodes so every node automatically knows which blocks are assigned to which nodes which makes it scalable fast um, to actually uh, use it if you want to go from one subnet to another subnet. As I already explained, you have to go through a route in the AWS networking plane. Well, if you want to do that, um, and you would use an IP address space, which is not known by AWS, of course, uh, that might be problem. So there might be the option to use BGP uh, peering in uh, some way or another, but there's a way more easier uh, solution that is use cross subnets. So if we would go from one subnet to another, we might do automatic encapsulation with VXLAN or IP and IP and it perfectly works. Even if you have no uh, access or control towards the router in between. So quite a lot of advantages. Uh, it's way more efficient when it comes to IP address translation. Um, it's way more easy to secure, I would say, um, because you can actually control access to the Kubernetes nodes and ports instead of to all the ports. ports. Um, it's very efficient by using BGP, um, as I mentioned. Yeah? Disadvantage, I wouldn't call it a disadvantage, um, is the VPC IP addressing, um, which might look easy, but from a security point of view, I would honestly uh, give the advice not to do that because it means that you have to access or control the access to your pods through means of network security groups inside of uh, AWS. Now, if you want to install EKS, um, it might look simple, uh, it is simple. If you want to use the native VPC CNI, you can do that. Basically type a command and it will pop up uh, a cluster. Uh, try to do it as a demo, but it takes terribly long, sometimes up to an hour. So I'm not going to do that. I already deployed two clusters. So you have to believe me that it can be spun up. So if you want to go the native VPC, it's basically pretty easy, you deploy an EKS cluster and you basically deploy Calico policies. It's as simple as that. If you want to use a Calico C9, um, it's not that uh, difficult. Uh, it's actually way more easy than the slide would suggest. So you actually deploy an EKS cluster without any nodes. That's one parameter you actually give along. Um, the CNI and the IP addressing uh, is actually managed inside of the nodes by using a daemon set, which is called AWS node, which is also installed on the left side of the slide, of course. We remove that, we replace it by Calico. Uh, we can customize Calico uh, as much as we want, uh, specifying IP pools, block sizes, cross subnet, and so on and so forth. Uh, once this is done, this is an optional uh, step. We actually add nodes 
to our EKS cluster and we're off we go. Yeah. Last step is also optional because if you're using VXLAN, I don't have to do this step. So it's totally not difficult. If you go to docs.tagira.io or docs.projectcalico.org, you will see how to install Calico CNI on top of EKS. And you will see that this only a very short uh, read and a few commands to uh, use. So the setup I created, uh, I created a very long and difficult setup um, from A to Z. I can share that if we have time left. Um, but essentially what I did was I created an EKS cluster with Calico as a CNI. Uh, I don't have two working nodes, I have four across two uh, availability zones. Uh, I used the default CIDR, as you can see, it's 192.168, which is not the IP addressing of my uh, nodes. My nodes are in a 10.0.1.0 uh, subnets. I will be using VXLAN encapsulation and we'll be using outgoing NOT, making sure that our pods can actually reach uh, the internet. So pretty straightforward um, to do. How did I do this? Well, if you want to recreate this uh, setup, I think you can actually simply copy paste this. Um, and we'll share the slides, of course. So if you want to install the CNI of Calico, what you do is create a cluster. You give your cluster a name. You specify the option without node group. And it's optional, but you can actually specify where to store the cube config file so that we can actually access, of course, the cluster later. Next up, as I said, is delete the daemon set, which uh, is installed by default to basically manage the AWS CNI. So we're going to delete the daemon set. No worries. Uh, since there are no nodes, nothing is going to happen. We can actually apply the manifest to install Calico. So it will install a daemon set I'll show you as well as some CRDs. Um, once this is done, we can actually gracefully add a node group. So we specify the region, the type of image to use, and you hit enter. At that moment, it takes another 20, 30 minutes, but everything will automatically be created. You will have some nodes. As you can see, there's also a parameter that specifies how many pods per node uh, you can have for Calico. It's not that important, but as you remember for AWS CNI, it is important. Um, of course, we are all cost aware, so if you don't, need to cluster anymore, it's pretty easy to delete the cluster by the command. So if you want to repeat this lab, well, you can perfectly uh, copy paste these five commands and enjoy all the goodness of Calico. Okay. I'm going to switch to the demo straight away, uh, but I'm probably running out of time. So I'll do this part first. If you want to know more, check out the website of Tagira and the partner portal. So you get all the news about AWS. Um, there are a few upcoming events. Um, I listed a few of them here, but I see a typo. It's October 10th and not September 10th. Um, if you want to sign up, go to tagira.io slash events, and you can register to these uh, events as you did today. If you're intrigued by Calico Enterprise, check out the slash trial one. Um, if you check out this and you sign up, you will get a automated environment in which you can actually enjoy auto creation of policies, preview and staging of policies. Uh, check out the troubleshooting tools. As you know, it's always very cumbersome to see whether uh, a pod can reach another pod. You need a lot of tools. Well, through Calico Enterprise, you will have all the logging that you can dream of. 
You can also enjoy the flow visualizer, which is graphical representation of uh, which flows are happening inside of your cluster. Um, you can actually also use the external access controls. If you want to control access to a relational database, you can. And of course, there is quite some customization available when it comes down to reporting and compliance reporting. So feel free, if you want to see screenshots, I can share them later on. But if you check out other webinars or other YouTube videos where this will be posted also, you can actually uh, see these things happening. So if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I'm going to try to move my screen up to here. So let me enlarge this. And before Jane asks me, I will uh, enlarge my screen. I hope you can see it. So at this point, um, I'm using a cluster. Um, this cluster is a cluster um, which has, uh, let me see, I don't say anything stupid, um, the, which is, has uh, AWS CNI. Um, to, verify, to verify this, we can actually type the command kubectl. Uh, get daemon set, make my life easy, you will actually see that there is a daemon set installed, which is called AWS node. That's the one we actually delete when we want to install uh, Calico. Um, but I have another cluster set up for this to show this. So uh, let's check out a few things to see if we can actually find a way around. So if we, for example, would list our pods and do, for example, AW white, we can actually see that, that we are actually using IP addresses in these ranges, as you can see. Now, this is a cluster which is automatically created by the EKS CTL command. So to prove this, we can actually do kubectl get nodes. And if we do minus o white, we should actually also see the IP addresses of um, the nodes which are uh, assigned. And as you can see, there are also in the 178 and so on and so forth uh, subnets. If you actually go to the Amazon console and we would use, for example, this uh, cluster Demo gods are not with me today. Um, if we would let me go to clouds. Let me authenticate quickly. And once I get a token. You should actually see if we go to EC2 instances and we go to the ones related to this cluster and we go to networking, you can actually see that all the pods assigned here, yeah, there are a few of them, uh, are actually second day IP addresses inside of the cluster. So they're coming from the same subnet or subnets um, as the nodes that are assigned to. Okay. Um, if you go back to here, let's see. Okay, watch this again. Um, you can actually also have the network policies up and running. As you can see, these are exactly the same network policies which are deployed here as I will be using inside of 
the other cluster. So takeaway here is this is a AWS native uh, CNI setup, pretty easy to set up. Um, you don't even need all the intermediate lines I just showed uh, and you can play around. If we're going to go towards the Calico one, well, I'll switch my screens here. Uh, let me enlarge this a little bit. Okay, so let's do the same thing to verify if we are actually using uh, Calico. Well, kubectl get daemon set minus a, and we'll actually see that AWS node has been replaced by Calico node. So we know that um, Calico is being used. Um, these clusters are set up. If we would actually go to kubectl get nodes, you will actually see the IP addresses of the nodes. You can see these are in ranges which are 10, 0, 1 and 10, 0. Two, which are the subnets I assigned manually uh, to the availability zones. Um, took me quite some time to figure it all out. But if you're interested, I can share how to do that. But it's a lot of work, but you can set up the VPC manually, the subnets, the routing, and so on and so forth, and finally deploy the EKS cluster. So this one is a fully controlled. I have multiple nodes, four at this moment. So um, but as you can see, the ones are in two different availability zones. So if we're going to check out the pods which are actually running on side of this uh, Calico cluster in EKS, uh, and we add the white option, we'll actually see that our IP addresses which are assigned to the pods are in the 192.168. Uh, range or something similar, it don't have to be uh, 106. Where are these things coming from or these ranges coming from? Well, as you know, the IP address management is not done by AWS, but is done by Calico. Uh, we have a great tool for this, which is Calico CTL, and we can actually get IP pools and we can actually also see if we add minus YAML, no, yeah, it should work. Okay, so you can see that there is an IP pool assigned. Um, as you can see, this side here is 192.168.16. It's configurable. And something to note is the block size. What Calico does is it will actually take this block, uh, the side here, which is a cluster wide networking range. It will split it up in blocks. These blocks are assigned to nodes uh, and these blocks are 26 slash 26. If a block is getting full or out of IP address ranges, Calico is smart enough to actually assign multiple blocks uh, to a node. And as I already mentioned, how does the nodes know about the blocks for efficiency reasons? Uh, these blocks are changed through the BGP routing. As you can see we're using VXLAN always, but uh, you can change this to uh, your subnet or to never, yeah? Or you can actually enable IP mode uh, to always your subnet. So all the flexibility uh, of the Calico networking is actually configured and modified inside of the IP pool. And if you know more advanced things about uh, Calico, you know, you can have multiple pools. Um, so you can actually combine VXLAN and IP and IP or uh, no uncap uh, pretty easily. If you wanna play around and check out the Calico uh, IPAM, you can actually do Calico IPAM show and show and uh, actually get a peek inside of these assigned blocks. So if that works out, you can actually see 
that the blocks are assigned. So there are four blocks assigned. I have four nodes. You can actually see how many IP addresses are available in use and free. So these tools uh, can actually help you plan, um, decide whether or not to increase the number of nodes. Just think about the easiness of auto scaling. Um, you can actually plan ahead and uh, do things. I applied exactly the same application and exactly the same network policy. So if I would actually do kubectl get uh, net, net policies, uh, you will actually see that whether you're using the network policies inside of native or you can actually just redeploy them over here. Cool thing is, um, both also support Calico network policies. Calico network policies are way more advanced. They have options like drop, pass, log, and so on and so forth. So if you want to make more granular um, network policies, you can do that. I think I'm somehow true what I wanted to show you. Um, normally I could do it an hour longer if I did the setup um, uh, during the, the session, but that's not the point. So I hope I showed you that through the use of uh, EKCTL, you can create two types of clusters, one with the AWS CNI, one with the Calico CNI. Um, big difference is the way IP address management works, and it is way more flexible and scalable when you're using Calico. Um, both support Calico network policies, so native Kubernetes as well as Calico network policies. Um, if you add Tagir Enterprise on top of this mix, um, you also will have logging, flow visualization um, that you can actually uh, enjoy. I'll thank you. If you have any questions for free, uh, to ask them, we still have a few minutes. If not, uh, I'll thank you and hope to see or speak to you uh, later in some other sessions. If you have any recommendations or topics you want to address in these webinars, feel free to send them to me um, or to Jane and we'll happily create a webinar or a topic around this. Thank you.